Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Good morning, welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook, I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for being here with me this morning. Today is Palm Sunday, and we'll be reading that story in the Gospel according to Mark, the story that tells about the first day of the last week of Jesus' life here with us before he was put to death. We'll be talking this morning about what that story might mean for you, what that story might mean for me. First, though, I have a whole bunch of announcements because it is Holy Week and there's a lot going on here at the church. Have some patience. If you miss any of the details, you can find them on Facebook. You can find them um, in our weekly email newsletter. We've been sending out some special editions of that newsletter. So here is what you're going to want to know. If you are in the Texoma area and you're worshiping on, sun, worshiping on Sunday, March 24th, you'll want to know that this evening at Leap of Faith is movie night for kids, teens, adults. We'll be showing a movie here called Kumba, and we'll be serving lots of popcorn. It's free, of course. Everyone is welcome. 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 in Sherman. We'll have a Holy Thursday worship service this Thursday, 5.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary, uh, followed by a chicken spaghetti dinner at 6 o'clock. The Good Friday service will be online on YouTube, posted at noon this Friday and remaining posted for you to, uh, for you to access as your life allows. And then, of course, there's Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, just one week from now, starts with a sunrise service live online on our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. That happens at 7, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Brunch here in the, in the building beginning at 945. An Easter egg hunt here at our building starts at 1030 a.m. on the dot. Worship in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock, and of course the online service at 9.30 as usual, that's central daylight time. If you missed any of this again, uh, check our Facebook page, the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, or our or our newsletter, our online newsletter. If you don't receive that newsletter, text me your email address, 903-821-4505. If you're worshiping on YouTube this morning, give us a thumbs up. I'll leave your name in the comments or in the chat. Be glad to Be glad to see who's here with us. We're grateful, of course, for your financial support of ministry at Leap of Faith. You can offer that financial support in several ways. Text to give, 903-225-8774. Use the PayPal button in our newsletter or on our website, mylofc.org. Or just mail a check to Leap of Faith Church, 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. Updated information of the church, mylofc.org or that Facebook, uh, that Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. Those are the announcements. I know they were lengthy. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Now let's start to worship, and let's do that with a prayer. God, as Holy Week begins today, we remember the events of that last week of Jesus' life before he went to the cross. We add our voices to the voices of those who greeted him that long ago, first Palm Sunday morning, welcoming him as our king, asking him to help us, asking him to save us. Give us grace, God, to trust that following Jesus faithfully always leads us to life. And know, God, we're praying in his name. Amen. Our Bible lesson continues in the Gospel according to Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading this morning from the New International Version, in which the story goes like this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. 
They went and they found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they'd cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and he went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. I ask God to bless this reading of God's word. Well, I am very, very grateful for the worship leadership that Paul Watkins and Fidel Rivas brought to Leap of Faith Church while I was away the past two Sundays. We have had many effective guest preachers over the almost eight years of the life of Leap of Faith Church, but we are fortunate now to have these two men who are deeply committed, deeply committed to following Jesus, men who love the church, men who love its people, and who are trained, experienced, and willing to serve in worship leadership as well in the many other ways that they serve Leap of Faith Church. I hope that you'll be thankful as you have opportunity to thank, to thank Paul and to thank Fidel for their ministry. Whenever you have the opportunity, and if you don't, if you don't run into them here in the building, uh, send them a note, send them a text, and let them know how much they are each appreciated. I personally, well, I am especially grateful for their ministry. I know that I can turn to either of them whenever help is needed, like they helped these past two Sundays when I went away with my family members. We went away for one of our periodic learning experiences. We rarely take a vacation, but we do go on these regular learning experiences to find out more about, well, a variety of the subjects. Sometimes it's history, sometimes it's geography, sometimes science, or sometimes art. This most recent spring break, spring break learning experience was actually intended, though. It wasn't meant to be a learning experience. It was meant to be an honest-to-goodness vacation. It didn't turn out that way, though. It turned out to be one of the most significant learning experiences that I've ever had. What happened is we booked a cruise just for a vacation on a ship that sailed out of Cartagena, Colombia, what we didn't know when we booked that cruise was that this particular voyage was designed for residents of South America, which is to say that just about everybody on that ship spoke Spanish e exclusively. Uh, my, my family speaks toddler Spanish, which is to say that we have a tiny, tiny vocabulary and no grammar at all. There were cultural differences as well between our families and others on that ship. Differences in expectations, differences in entertainment preferences, differences in dining habits, differences in manners. We found ourselves unintentionally immersed in a cross-cultural experience that we had come utterly unprepared for. What saved us was compassion. What saved us was the compassion of the crew, the compassion of other pas passengers, their willingness to put up with our general cluelessness. In spite of that compassion, though, I learned for the first time in my life what it's like to be totally on the outside of the group, understanding little and being little understood. Generally speaking, it was a sobering experience, but over and over and over again, there was somehow someone who through their compassion saved us. Saved us when our flights were delayed, saved us when our bags were lost, saved us when we didn't know, didn't know how to ask for what we needed to replace lost clothing, saved us when we couldn't find a taxi, saved us when we couldn't read the menus, saved us when we couldn't find our way. And that's part of what the Bible story today is about. But first, some review. Since we celebrated Mardi Gras here on Sunday, February 11th, the sermon texts I've chosen to preach have been from the Gospel according to Mark. We've seen how those various stories helped us review some basic understandings here at Leap of Faith Church, what the season of Lent is about, what baptism at Leap of Faith is about, 
what it is that Jesus is leading us into and the expectation that in this church we have not only the permission but also the expectation that we'll ask questions. Questions about our faith, our theology, questions about the Bible itself. The story today follows along that same path as it helps us review who Jesus is. And so we've come to the story of the first day of the last week before Jesus dies. Jesus and his closest friends and followers, his disciples, they're on their way to Jerusalem. They aren't just wandering around. They're making this trip to Jerusalem as part of their observance of Passover, the Jewish festival commemorating the liberation of the Jews from slavery in Egypt. They, along with probably thousands of others, are making a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage to the Jerusalem temple. It's a religious, a religious obs observance for sure, but there's more, more than just that going on. Think perhaps of the 4th of July. There's both the fun, festive aspect of the holiday and the profoundly reverent aspect of appreciating freedom and the sacrifice it takes to secure freedom. And then overlay that with true religious devotion. And that's kind of what's going on with the crowd filling the road that Jesus rides down on the little colt that he's asked two of his disciples to bring to him. It's probably pretty funny to see a grown man riding a little colt. So there are doubtless people in the crowd who are laughing and yelling and taking off their coats and cutting down leafy branches from the trees and tossing them on the ground in front of Jesus in a lighthearted parody of the way they'd greet a king. And there are probably people in that crowd along the road to Jerusalem who are recalling, thinking about what they know of Holy Scripture as they watch Jesus ride in. There are probably people in that crowd who are remembering the prophecy of Zechariah 500 years earlier, a prophecy that said, Rejoice greatly. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. There are probably people in that crowd who look at Jesus and wonder to themselves if, if, if it can really be it, if he can really be it, if Jesus can be that king, that Messiah, that deliverer they've been looking for, waiting for, for such a very long time. There are probably people in that crowd who are full of hope that somehow, somehow, they're seeing the very fulfillment of pro prophecy taking place right that moment, right before their eyes. And they shout out to Jesus the deepest desire of their hearts. They shout out Hosanna. They shout out Hosanna, which means save us. They take a chance that he is really the one, really the Savior they've been expecting. And they shout out Jesus. Jesus, save us. Jesus, deliver us. Jesus, help us. Make us truly free. And then just like that, it's over. The parade is over. The celebration is over, and Jesus reaches Jerusalem, and the party and the parade, it's over. Jesus gets off the colt and has promised some of his disciples take it back to its owner, and it's late. But Jesus goes into the temple, and he looks around at everything, and then he quietly, quietly leaves, having seen what all is before him what all he has yet to do for the people he loves. Because, of course, Jesus is the Savior. He's the one sent to save us. And what a job that is. And then Jesus turns himself over to that work, to the work of saving us, having fully prepared himself for all that's ahead for him. So that's the story what are we going to do with this story? What difference does this story make to you, to me? I wonder how many of us here have been asked at some time or other by someone or other whether we're saved. I myself come from a religious tradition that doesn't express itself in this way quite so often. So as a teenager and as a young adult, I was pretty put off by that question, have you been saved? It always sounded to me sort of like I was being asked whether I was a member of the club and less a genuine inquiry into the state of my faith. 
But then I lived a few more years and the question began to make more sense to me. Because as I lived a few more years, I began to understand that almost all of us have something we desperately, desperately need to be saved from. Some of us need to be saved from our busyness. Some of us need to be saved from loneliness. Some of us need to be saved from illness. Some of us need to be saved from bravado. Some of us need to be saved from fear. Some of us need to be saved from a relationship that is steeped in abuse. Some of us some of us need to be saved from ourselves, from self-righteousness, from self-pity, self-involvement, self-satisfaction. I don't know that I've ever known anyone, in fact, who doesn't need to be saved from something or other. And what we have today is the old, old story that Jesus, that love, that his love, is what will save us all it takes is our willingness to rely on it, to lean on it, to take love's hand and let us lead it. Let it let it lead us. All it takes to be saved is our willingness to give ourselves over to love instead of busyness, love instead of sadness, love instead of fear. So, so are you willing? Are you willing to be set free? Just say yes, because love stands there, ready and willing to save us. Jesus stands there, ready and willing to save us. He's standing right in front of us, holding out his his hand. So take it. Just take it. Hosanna. Amen. So joys, concerns. I bet you have some that you'd like to share and you can do that by by texting 903-821-4505. You can text, you can call. Glad to hear from you. Um, Joys and concerns I have here on my list are these. Please pray, of course, for those who lead our world, the leaders of our country, our state, our community. You know, as I do, that these are troubled times and that those who lead us need all the prayers they can get. Please serve, Please pray for those who serve in the military of the United States, especially Tyler, Jessica, and Colin. I ask your prayers for all those who are ill, injured, suffering in any way. Oh, man, a lot of people still have all kinds of respiratory distress going on. Please pray for your friends, family members, neighbors who are suffering from these minor but annoying illnesses. I ask your prayers as well for these. Uh, Jennifer, Ray, Judy, Marilyn, Jean, Mary Ann, Paul, Danny, Shad, Bill, Hope, Howard, Billy, Monty, James, Christian, Fidel, Miriam, Pat, John, Ned, Carol, Steve. Um, We received word that um, one of our members' brothers um, has experienced the death two days in a row of colleagues. Please pray for Paul Rogers and his employer, George Strait. Uh, We have no birthdays on the list this week. But if you know of someone who has a birthday and we need to be remembering that birthday, 903-821-4505, let me know and I'll call or send a note to that person who's celebrating a birthday. We have other joys, though. The Heart of Texoma Montessori Academy that that uh, is, is housed in space here at the church is preparing for a move into a building of their own very shortly, just a few weeks' time. Please pray for the head of school, Christina Capalbo, and all the instructors, all the educators at the heart of Texoma, all the parents and all the children as they prepare to make this exciting move into uh, into their new building uh, very, very shortly, in just a few weeks' time. We are thanking God for Steve Robinson, who rebuilt a, a little walking bridge here at the church, a little walking bridge that is very, very important to ensure safe access into the building. Thanking God, as I mentioned, for Paul Watkins and for Fidel Rivas, who preached and led worship while I was away.
I ask your prayers for teacher ass assistant Maricela Reyna and secretary Marka Holloway. They are our per parent early childhood center staff members of the week for this week of March 24th. We are supporting Fidel Rivas with our prayers as he prepares for vacation Bible school coming up in June. He's the director of Bible school this year, and we are grateful for his ministry and grateful for the ministry of all those who are taking leadership positions in vacation Bible school. Um, I mentioned that tonight is movie night here at Leap of Faith Church. Thanking God for the gift of Christina uh, Capalbo, who is letting us borrow a wonderful popcorn machine to, to, use, uh, to use this evening. We're praying for all in ministry here at Leap of Faith Church, our Leap of Faith band, and of course, Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook, who produce this worship service. Again, if you have joys and concerns, which I am certain you do, 903-821-4505. And now let's pray. God, on this Palm Sunday, today we're remembering that Jesus began the last week before his crucifixion with a joyful parade and with public acclamation. Today begins a celebration, and we are glad. And next Sunday, God, we'll be remembering that Jesus rises above death, gives us the way to rise above it, too. Next Sunday, it'll be another celebration, and we are joyful. Help us remember as well, God, all that comes between the two celebrations. Help us remember that Jesus in his last week faced authorities who tried to trip him up, followers who misunderstood him again and again, friends who backed away from him, enemies who worked to destroy him and his message, him and his ministry, him and his mission. Help us, God. Help us be unafraid to remember that Jesus' last week was about loss, it was about sacrifice, it was about pain, and it was about death. God, help us grab hold of the truth that though when we follow Jesus, his love leads us inevitably into loss and sacrifice, into pain and death, it's his love that gives us a way out of those things, really the only way out. Let this week ahead be truly holy for us, God, set apart, sacred. Prompt us and prod us to remember what Jesus faced in his last week and make us brave and true brave and true to follow him even when he seemingly leads us into the same darkness that he once faced. Save us, God. Save us from expecting or demanding or requiring that our faith make us happy all the time. Give us something deeper than that. Give us the conviction that while we will certainly walk with Jesus through some deep, dark valleys, if we keep on, he will lead us at last into the sun. Please hear our prayer, God. Address as well our spoken joys, our spoken concerns. Hear each and every prayer now being lifted to you silently for those whose concerns we haven't mentioned out loud. And hear us as we pray together in Jesus' name as he teaches us. Our Father who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I remind you of what it is that we believe here at Leap of Faith Church. Oh. If you're asked, if you're ever asked what it is we believe, it's the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I remind you as well of our values statement here at Leap of Faith. 
We recognize a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treated equally regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity with respect to sacramental worship, service, leadership, marriage, and ordination. Thank you again for coming to worship today. Thank you for coming to be part of this Palm Sunday service. If I can be helpful to you in some way, if the church can be helpful to you in some way, please let me know, 903-821-4505. You can call, leave a message, text. We'd be glad to hear from you. To find out more about us, mylofc.org, my Our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, or our or our weekly email newsletter. Subscribe by sending me your email address, 903-821-4505. We would be deeply grateful of your financial support for ministry here. Text to give, 903-225-8774. PayPal button on our newsletter on our website, or just mail a check to Leap of Faith Church, 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. Again, thank you. I hope that you'll be uh, continuing to give some thought, giving some prayer to all we've talked about today, especially what it means to you that Jesus is your Savior, is our Savior. I hope you'll stay with us now as we as we worship with music from the Leap of Faith Church Band. If you're in the Texoma area, we'd love to see you sometime during during Holy Week on Easter Sunday or any time after that. You know you're always welcome here. And if you're not in the Texoma area or if it's not convenient, not possible for you to come into the sanctuary, we're so glad that we can offer you this online service. Now go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. Great job.
Will you come and follow me if I recall your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I recall your Will you let the blind see if I recall your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what? Will you love the you you hide if I recall your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch? Lord, your summons echoes true when you would call my name. Let me turn and fall.